All right, here with uh, UC Santa Barbara men's head coach Tim Vomstig. To his right, to our left, uh, Finn Ballard McBride, the um, men's soccer championship MVP. And to his uh, left, to our right, uh, Sam Fletcher. Coach, can you start us off with an opening statement, please? I mean, uh, you know, again, opening statement. Um, we have we started playing start of August. Uh, there was one thing that we talked about from the first day of practice, which was this is the group that needs to find a way to get to the Big West tournament. This is a group that needs to find a way to get two home games, and that's going to be the road to the NCAA tournament this year. Um, I mean. I think it was going to be unrealistic to expect our conference, um, not having played in, in, in the fall or spring last year, to do much more than what we had to do this year, which is it's going to be the conference winner. And, and so um, we prepared differently this year, honestly. Um, in years past, we've gone into this game or into the tournament feeling pretty good about maybe getting a, you know already in the tournament like we were two years ago. Um, I don't know if that helped to change our focus this year, but we were certainly dialed in to tonight. Uh, we managed our players all year with the idea in mind, and we also talked about the fact that we played Davis at Davis at 1 o'clock in the afternoon versus Harder Stadium at 7 p.m. back in 2019. So it's either Davis or maybe an Irvine on the road, or do we want those games here? I think everybody knows our, our success here at Harder Stadium. Um, so that's what we played for all year. And, and we stayed after it. Um, and again, credit to the players uh, for having stayed focused. I, I massively enjoyed the past two weeks. It was the only two weeks where we actually had five days to prepare for a game. And uh, it makes a world of difference. Uh, I felt very comfortable going into tonight's game because I thought the players were, were focused, were, were dialed in. We had time to, to discuss things, look at things, and more importantly, get physically ready to play. Uh, Sam, I got one for you. Um, just talk about how the year progression has come along since the last couple of years. I mean, you weren't really uh, too much of an influence in the game in your first two years, but you really turned it on in these last uh, two years of play that you've had. Yeah, um, I think uh, we'll redshirt in the first year and then second year. I was behind a couple of brilliant players, uh, Saeed, Conte, and Kaya Fabretti. Learned a lot from them. Um, and I played in some big games. I uh, started my first game against Stanford. And, uh, I think I've been able to, to trust myself and the boys around me since then. Uh, started against Stanford and then we, we made that big run in, in 2019. Obviously, played in a, a lot of huge matches, started and played against some brilliant players there. Um, so now we're, we're here this year and come back from injury and, and really been able to get a hold on this team and comfortable in the position that I'm at. I, I kind of know a job that I'm, that I'm doing and um, no, I, I trust all the players around me. I've got some, got some good, good boys around me. And how prepared were you for a defensive battle all night long? I mean, last three games, I think there's only been two goals scored in regulation at most. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, we've come up against some, some really talented individual players. Uh, against Davis, we're playing offensive MVP and midfielder of the year. Um, so so we, we knew what we were doing there. And that was a physical game. We knew that was going to be. And then coming to, to the game today, and Irvine, obviously, loaded with players. Uh, 31, Francesco Montanel, real food product. Uh, hell of a kid, and um, played a really good game tonight. That had a lot to do with with him uh, and, and a couple other players too. They're, they're a really good team. But yeah, definitely ready. Tim, was there more pressure knowing that only one team is coming going to come from the Big West Conference this year? Was there was there a little bit more pressure on each game? Um, <clears throat> no, I, I I actually thought that knowing that up front. Kind of took the mystery out of it this year. As I said, uh, we treated our normally the pressure comes for us in non-conference. We're we're sitting here going, well, if we beat Oregon State or if we can beat Stanford on the road, those are games that are going to give us big RPI. And and then if we get the conference and we win, you know, go seven and three, that's been our recipe, right? Uh, find a couple big wins. Um, we we knew even if we had beaten Oregon State or beaten Stanford, it might have helped our RPI. But the reality is, again, it's you know eight out of our ten teams are literally below a hundred. So you know when you're playing ten conference games, you know there's no way that we were going to you know even if we had won all those games by the time we play ten conference games, we'd be in the same position we were tonight, uh, having to win. It's really good though I thought because you know I always think the best time to coach is in the playoffs or or in games in which you know winner you know goes home. 
because the players are focused, you're dialed in, everything's good. As a coach, it's great. Um, and so it was fun because it's been that way now since, again, we, we finished at Northridge, right? And, and we took that loss in the same way we took the Davis loss and it kind of woke us up a little bit. Um, so as disappointing as it was we lost that last game, it was actually exactly what this group needed. Because I think we had like 11 games unbeaten and then you kind of get into this rut. Um, so we went down there, we didn't try to lose, but we certainly didn't do enough to win. And, and now we're like, okay, well, let's put that past this and now we got two games. By the way, we, in my opinion, we, we played the two hardest teams, I mean, for us at least. Everyone has that arch nemesis, Davis and, and Irvine are for us. Uh, those are the ones that we probably lost, that and Fullerton along the way. Um, so the idea that we had to go through those two reminded me of 2019 when you have St. Mary's and in Indiana and Wake Forest, you know, you're going through Berkeley. It, it's, it's a bigger challenge, but you're asking more of your players. Yeah, Finn, congratulations on winning Big West Player Tournament. Uh, you just told me Irvine was the only team you had not beaten in your time here. Just talk about what the team environment was like this week and the level of focus you guys all had going into a game like this. Yeah, so like Tim said, the last few weeks we've had five days to prepare for the game. So that's given us a bit more time to do a deeper analysis of Irvine and of Davis to make sure where everyone knows what their responsibilities are and what their jobs are. and. I think that helped us prepare for the game and uh, yeah, and have a clean game, yeah. Tim, can you just kind of talk about the offensive explosion, you know, whatever you want to call it, even before there you were a man up, uh, got the two goals, the importance of the early goals and how that resulted in you guys putting this one going the way? Uh, exactly. I, I, there was a big challenge this week to our forward line. Um, I, I, in looking back at the last game or the last couple of games, um, we did not get after defenders enough. We did not attack defenders enough. We weren't physical enough. So we basically kind of, we started the season, I said, we started the season kind of modeling Liverpool where you put three forwards, you bring them inside and, and you go after them that way. And uh, we, we went to tonight's game back to three forwards. We brought them inside, which kept them close to each other. Uh, we put Thabit underneath of them. We just said, hey, let's play our forward line. And, and so I think there was a renewed emphasis um, I will tell you that I thought like over the past, you know, 10, 12, 14 days, you know, Nemo has really been coming on up front. And so that starts to take a little pressure off of the other players that are there. Uh, so I thought he gave us great minutes. And of course, Chava went in today and, and does what Chava does, which is athletic and big and running and physical. And, and I thought ultimately we did what we've been doing all year, which is when I go to my bench after a lot of running in the first half, you could see they were running a lot to stay in the game. Uh, they got tired. And, and that's been our recipe all year. Can I get you tired in the first half so that I can finish in the second half? Tonight we were fortunate we got the two goals along the way. So that really drove a stake. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, for us, the emphasis of the game tonight was one up front. Um, and, and we've gotten, look, you have, you have Will and Henry who have dominated the back all conference play. Uh, they're deserving first team all conference players. and. Henry, you know, player of the year in the back. Once again tonight, they were very good. I think Nemo had, you know, I think they broke in once on, on the right hand side. Uh, that was their best look. Uh, so it's good. Tim, how good were Sam and Jared in front of that back line tonight? I thought they were terrific. Well, um, I, I always, as a coach, feel like I have to start to lean on some people because we get to this time of the year, I, I can't be calling out March from the sideline and you've got this and you've got that. At some point, someone has to really take the leadership, whether it's set pieces or whatever we're doing, okay? And, and you know, I think I asked Sam, um, I asked Sam a couple games ago, literally, like, hey, it's, it's the time, well, actually, it was, you know, in the Davis game, we've been rotating, and I told him and Jared that uh, we're, we're not subbing the two of you. So don't don't ask to come out. Of course, Jared has to come out tonight, uh, but I'll get over it. Uh, but uh, no, I just said we're, we're not taking you out. You, you two are in the middle of the park. Uh, you need to organize everything. You need to call out the marks. You need to make sure we're picked up. And I'll move everybody else around, but I'm not touching the middle of my park. So that allows me to play with the two center backs and and the two uh, basically two central midfielders. And and that was the key for me in the last two games. Uh, was having that continuity right in the middle of the park. Everyone else, you know, we can move in and out, move around. Finn, you've 
in, we've talked about 2019. I, I've lost count of how many times tonight already in this press conference. <laughs> I recall the St. Mary's locker room when after you guys beat the Gales, there was a sha la 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 UCS beat chant. Heard that again just right now. How, did, how much does that excite you, that the potential for another run is on the cards? Well, I'm fortunate enough since I came here in 2019 to go on two runs. I haven't not made the tournament yet, so I can't say I know what, it, I can't say I know what it's like not to make the tournament, but it's exciting nonetheless, and uh, I think this group of boys has a good chance of going deep in the tournament. And then now that we've made it there, anything can happen, and our goal is to go all the way. Jim, what's, what has to happen for you guys to host? Again. Well, it, it all comes down to our administrator. If <laughs> if he's able to make it happen, then he's done a good job. If he doesn't, then you know it's bad. So, uh, what is it going to take to host? Uh, I, I do think I have to recall in 13, 14, whatever conference you know tournament tournament appearances. I, I can't remember the first time we've ever traveled the first game away. Uh, we've always been home, uh, whether we got a seed and we got naturally a home, or whether or not. You know, they looked at the brackets and said, why wouldn't you want to go play it harder? Um, so we'll see. I mean, it's, it's the first game is always regional, so it's not a complicated conversation. You look at who's in L.A., and I don't know what the final was at Loyola Marymount, uh, but uh, that, that score is big because the two teams that are going to make the tournament are potentially UCLA and Loyola, and both of them are not in our conference. So that, that becomes, and neither of them are going to be seeded. So that kind of becomes an obvious matchup, to be honest. I mean, but... Sometimes not. Sometimes they, you know, like a few years ago when they flew in Wolford or whatever, um, you know, because it just doesn't match up. Uh, but typically you look at the schools that are very close and it becomes like Santa Clara plays Stanford and UCSB plays Loyola. Um, but because we're all like, none of us are really higher seeded necessarily. I mean, yeah, maybe a little RPI here and there. It really becomes the preference and the NCAA has loved harder stadiums. So hopefully we get that game in here. But you know what? At this point, as I said, um, Famously to the players, um, at some point everybody loses. You just don't want to lose at home. So if we lose, let's make it somewhere really cool, um, you know, and, and go have that experience. Uh, but we, we can't lose at home. Uh, we can't lose in front of our home crowd. We can't lose a Big West championship. There's games you just can't lose, and tonight was one of them. So. Uh, Tim, you feel like you got a little bit of a monkey off your back considering you guys haven't won the Big West since. <laughs> yeah, are you kidding me? I can't remember the last time we won this thing. <laughs> Actually, I do. It was like, I think Fullerton, because the picture's right there in the hallway. I look 10 years younger because I was. Um, and uh, yeah, so no, that's the picture that's in our hallway right now is, is us holding that trophy from the last time. Uh, the trophy's gotten bigger and nicer and the ceremony's nicer. Uh, I think that one, they just kind of gave you a little glass jug and you ran around with it for a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a monkey off your back. But it, again, our goal has always been to make the tournament. So I, I just have to say it again. I don't know if we've always gone into the championship game with the same mindset. You know, we were like, don't take any red cards. Nobody get hurt. You know, we're playing next week. So we, there was a number of games where we walked in knowing that we're kind of in. Um, and so all of a sudden you're not playing the team that if they don't win, they know they're not in. And it's always been that different mindset. Tonight was great because they know they're not in, we know we're not in, and now let's play. So it was a different mindset. So it'll be interesting. Yeah. Sam, how proud are you of this team? Uh, couldn't be prouder. Uh, got, got a, like I said, great group of boys, uh, all different stories, all different backgrounds, and, and working together and uh, playing hard together. I mean, the, the performance tonight was gutsy, top to bottom. Um, you, you can see. We have a group that, that are really playing for each other, and that, that makes us dangerous. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.